Hey YouTube, it's Camaro123454 here. Uh, I'm just doing a little video. Um, so I have this red switch right here. It flips up and turns on the light bar on the front of the truck. No, here, I'll show you that. I got this light bar on the front, and down here I'm going to put some of those square pods between my tow hook and the bumper. I just gotta get a few more parts, so I guess this will be like a part one of a couple part video. Well, I was gonna do, of the two pods, I'm getting two of them, I'm gonna do one, each pod on its own switch, and then the light bar on its own switch too, so I can control all three of the lights uh, on their own. But as you can see, I kinda don't have much room on my dashboard. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this switch and rewire all of this so that there's not a big hole in my switch to just a basic switch um, or I might keep something like this or maybe even the red one and down here I'm gonna wire it into this cigarette outlet so that I can turn it on and off because these are always on and it's a pain because then that's gonna run my dash camera but um, what I'm gonna do is the old older cars had these uh, You know, the little garage door covers where you push the button up and it puts the garage door opener that's supposed to be in there. I took mine off and as you can see in there, you gotta, here, let me get a screwdriver to point with. And here you gotta lift this up, this little black piece right here, you gotta lift it up and try and wiggle the other end of that peg over this piece. And these are these pegs. You gotta know, try and get those out without snapping them, and I did that. So, yeah, this is just the cover. You got the little button, little gray button thing that's supposed to use the old style garage door openers that were big and gigantic and all that. Um, what I went out and got is I went to the Mocha hardware store, not hardware store, Vents. You know, I went to Pet Boys, and I got this set of three, this toggle switch plate. Um, Sorry, things don't focus right. And this is this is what it actually looks like. And I got three switches flip up, and then the light's supposed to turn on. And then back, that's what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mount them. I'm gonna cut a hole in this in this plate. And I'm gonna drill mount this onto here. So I go something like something like that. I'm gonna have them up in the roof and each switch will control each individual light. The left switch will do the left pod, the middle switch the light bar, the right switch the right pod. So what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, just kinda go over my steps that I took to cut this out. Um, get this plate mounted up and everything cut out so that I can put the switch panel on. Um, in another video I'll show how I do all my wiring and uh, I guess a fourth video would, or a third video or something like that will be how when everything's done. So let me go start getting some tools rep, uh, ready and some things prepped and we'll head over to my workbench and we can start doing some things from there. The first things I'm going to do is I'm going to take this the button piece off. Um, um, these screws are Torx bits, so they're the star ones. And uh, it's a T10. It's a T10 screw. So that's the size. I'm sorry for that focus. It won't focus. There we go. So it's a T10 for the screw. Um, it's just the two screws set around there. And it goes on like that. And then there's these, I got these little black things. I assume these were like spacers for uh, the garage door opener. These just pop off. Just, they're like little, they're literally like little Lego pieces. And there's one on each side. They just come off. I mean, you're not going to need these and I'm not going to use them. So uh, let me get this off and then I'm going to use a 
I'll end up using a Dremel to cut out the hole. I just have to get the Dremel. And then, um, yeah, so let me get that off. I mean, so the two screws are off. They're basic self taffing screws, and it looks like it even got a little lock, locking type head on it. They came off real easy. So this should just kind of come off. If things were simple, doing everything one handed. Um, uh, you gotta work it a little bit, and then boom, this comes off. So you're not gonna need this um, since you're gonna be destroying that. You're never gonna need this again. So, um, so that's that. I got the button off, so that's out of the way. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. I'm going to remove these switches from the plate. Um, there's a little nut over that, and then the washer and the uh, guard come off, and then this, uh, the actual switch will pop out the bottom side. Um, I'm going to take those off, uh, try and pop these lights out. It looks like they're just kind of pushed in. Two clips right there. So I'm going to try and pop all that stuff out so I can get just the plate. That way I can mark out where I'm going to put my holes and I'm going to need my holes. And then that also probably help me, uh, I should also help, uh, from there, I should say. Once I have the holes marked out in the outside diameter, I'll probably draw the outline of it on there. Once I have all that marked out, um, I can mark where I'm going to need to cut out the holes for the switches and the lights. I'm just going to do a basic big hole. I'm not going to try and do anything fancy for just the switches, just the lights. I'm just going to cut a hole the size of everything on there. So be right back and I'm going to hopefully All right, have these. So these nuts right here on the switch itself, this one right here is a, uh, it's a 15 millimeter. I'm just going to use this wrench. Um, I'm not going to use pliers because I don't want to end up scratching anything or ruining anything. Um, I started to get this one loose. I'm just going to try and get it off my thumb here. It's getting loose. Okay. So here comes the nut and the washer. It's just the washer. The nut's very shallow, so don't try not to drop that. And then the switch should just fall out like that. And here's the switch, just a basic on off switch, two leads. Um, I'm going to end up using push on connectors. I'm not going to do any soldering or anything uh, cheap where I just twist the wire around it. I'm going to use crimp on push connectors that crimp onto the wire and push onto the switch. So to put your basic on off, just clicks on, clicks off. This. These won't come necessarily, oh yeah, they will. They come off, there's a little tab on them so that they sit straight. Um, that just snaps down, so. Just set things to the side, don't lose anything, because losing stuff would be not good, but that's a whole switch assembly right there. This, there's another nut on the actual switch itself. Um, they had that underneath the switch panel, so I'm just gonna leave it under there. Because why mess with things the way they have it. So that's that, and then the switch, or the light I should say, it's got these two push buttons, um, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit, those two tabs, kind of push the tabs in, oh, push the two tabs in, and this should come right up, theoretically. I'm, keep in mind I'm holding my camera, so sorry for this. I shot in my hand. It'd probably be easier if I got pliers, but that's too much work to go get pliers. So I got them past the tabs. So it's just and the light just comes out. So that's your light, just the little red light. I'm assuming it's an LED in there. Um, positive negative lead. So 
that's everything pretty much for one of the actual working switches. I'll probably wire this up in series with the switch. So what that'll mean is the positive and the negative coming in for the switch. Um, I'll probably grab the positive, go straight to the on wire or the on section. And then from off, it'll come through the red to go through the light, through the black, and then down the rest of the relay or back to the relay. So that's the switch panel. I'm going to take the other two off off camera and then I'll set up uh, showing how I'm going to mark up the top plate and all that so that I can start cutting holes. Okay. Right Alright, so I'm over here at the workbench. Uh, here's the cover piece from actual car. Um, this would be mounted this way in the roof or in that ceiling organizer, this is where the button was. Um, and that way would be the front of the car. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take a look, Sharpie and in some area I know is going to be cut out, I'm just going to try and lightly mark an arrow showing that that way is forward. So I always have some sort of reference to tell which way is forward. Uh, I'll probably grab a better sharpie. That's just crap. But um, so I'm gonna do that for now. Uh, I got the plate all clean. On, it's on its own, so that'll go like that. For the, remember, everything's retroverted, so I'd be working on it like this on the workbench. It actually sits like this in the car, so. Um, I just gotta keep that in mind when I'm starting to cut holes and stuff um, and lining things up. And so it'll probably go this way. Um, I'm not 100% sure which way I want the switches to go yet, so I'm figuring that out. Uh, another thing is this kit comes with these four really just basic kind of self tapping screws. I'm not gonna use these. I went out and got me my own hardware I got they come in these came in two packs so I got two of these they're M4-0.7 by 16 millimeter uh, Allen head bolts they're black I think the black's gonna look good contrasting between the brushed aluminum and the black plastic so I got those, they're 16 millimeters long, which is going to be more than enough that I'm going to need. Um, four pack of flat washers, four millimeter, they're zinc plated so they're not going to rust. And then these came in two packs as well. I got some lock nuts instead of just normal nuts, that way nothing ever vibrates free. They're M4-07, they came in two packs. They're the nylon one, so it's got the little piece of nylon that locks it on on the inside uh, I got two packs of those as well so uh, the bolts are black even though everything else is silver but everything else will be inside the little compartment where all the wiring and stuff will be as well so you're never gonna see the washers or the lock nuts anyway so that's why I only got black bolts um, I'm gonna start measuring a few things up mocking up where these are gonna start going start marking screw holes uh, where the light holes are the lights are our, the light on the plate the lights are on the bottom underneath pilot and then the switches obviously correspond with the on off words so I'm gonna start mocking this up uh, roughly what's nice is it fits very very tightly so it's gonna look real clean uh, I'm not going to try and recess it or anything like that. I'm just going to bolt it directly onto the plastic, drill the holes and bolt it on so it'll stick down a little bit. But other than that, um, I still think it's going to look pretty badass. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm going to start mocking up some numbers, well not numbers, but start measuring some things, making sure things are square so it's not kind of off-centered or crooked or whatever. Um, I'm going to start doing that and then to cut the hole out big enough to fit the whole switch um, I'm going to mark where the uh, 
So I gotta fit the actual switch inside. Um, obviously through the hole that I cut in that. So I gotta fit the actual switch in there. I'm gonna do that by marking where the edge of this the, actual, the switch hole is, and I'm just going a little bit bigger than that underneath it so that I have plenty of room to fit the whole switch through there and there's no issues whatsoever because the switch is not going to mount to the plastic. The switch will mount to the plate and then from the corners the plate will mount to the door. Um, so it doesn't matter how big the hole is underneath the plate. So I'll um, be right back once I start marking some things up. Again I'm holding my camera so I only got one hand it makes things a little bit difficult. Alright, right, so I've tried to start uh, mocking some things up. I got this little measuring thing. I'm not doing anything super scientific. Uh, I got the center punch. When you push down and it, it punches a little hole. Uh, I can't really see it on there. But anyway, and what I've done is kind of lining everything up. Uh, where is it? It's hard to see, but right there, there's a small hole. And same on all four corners, and those are going to be my screw holes. And that's also going to give me a uh, very general baseline of where it's going to sit. The plate, I'm just eyeballing a lot of it up, making sure it's square, is mainly what I've done. Um, next thing is, is I got a better Sharpie somewhere. I had it and then I set it down somewhere. But I'm going to start marking around the actual holes for the switch and the light. Um, I've decided to have it open so that, see this up here was the ceiling, I decided to have it open this way and you push the switch forward to open it only because of the way the light is. I didn't want the light to be uh, reflecting in the mirror with the switch open so I'm hoping that the safety cover will block the light of, this, the, light of the light so that I can um, my driving won't be affected. So uh, let me start marking a few more things out. Uh, we'll get the cutting. When we get the cutting, obviously safety first. Put some glasses on, and then um, go from this is what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to drill the holes for the screws, and then I'm going to set the screws that I have into the holes just to kind of hold the plate in place while I can mark everything up. Um, what I'm going to use first, since I do have these little divots pushed into the plastic is I'm going to use the small bit first just to get the hole started. This is a 564th bit. I'm using an iPhone so it kind of sucks. Anyway, yeah, this is a 564th bit and then the actual diameter of the screw holes is the perfect size for a 532nd bit. They fit very snugly. Uh, this the bit fits very snugly through the screw holes, um, so it's not going to be overly big, but it's not going to be too small where the screws don't fit through there. So I'm going to get those drilled and just set the screws in there. I'm not going to put the lock rings or, or the lock nuts and the washers on. That's just the to hold the um, plate in place so that I can trace out and start marking up some places for dremeling. Um, again, safety first, so let's put these on. And start drilling some okay, holes. So on the back, I got these two posts. These are what uh, hold the screws for the button in. And then I got the little catch so that you don't push the button in too far. And then these two posts for those little Lego piece things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully take the Dremel that I have. It's actually a that's not a real Dremel, but it's a rotary tool and it works. So I'm going to carefully take that and take these posts off and these piece off with the cutoff wheel just so that I have something flat that I can set this on to drill these holes because with those posts I don't want it to, the plastic to kind of like blow out on the bottom. So I'm going to do that real quick and then uh, find my drill bit that I just had. Oh, put in the drill. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll start drilling holes.
It's the one thing you got to be careful for when dremeling, and I'm sure anybody who's ever used a rotary tool on plastic knows this, is the, that will that will spin hot or fast enough to get the plastic hot and start to melt, which obviously has happened in my case as you look at this. Um, I took it and used the cutoff wheel to kind of clean up these stubs a little bit better. Uh, I still got to get these two off, but I'm not going to film those because you don't need to see me filming all the time. Here's that uh, little safety tab so you don't push the button in. I got to trim that up a little bit, and I'll probably go over it with a sanding disc or something like that just to make it smooth. Um, it's still a pretty thick plastic, so don't be afraid if you nick the plastic a little bit. Uh, you should still be okay. And remember, most of this is probably going to come off anyway. So. Uh, I'll be right back. Alright, now that I got those that cleaned up, uh, that'll give me some room to work with so that I can get my punch holes lined up onto a piece of wood so that I can draw out these holes and then mount that plate and keep going from there. Let me drill these holes and I'll be right back. Alright, so I got the holes drilled, so these should just kind of slide on through. I got screws that were pretty snug on purpose, and these should just slip on into there. Like that. And then this one down in this corner. They're pretty snug, so some of them actually, because of this, this does have a little bit of a bend to it. Um, they don't go in very well, but that's good. They're snug, which means they're not going to be a lot of wobble room or anything wiggling. Um, they're not supposed to be necessarily threaded in, but you know, sometimes that's kind of how it works, right? So that's how it's going to mount up. And two in the other corner, too. Um, I did notice that the two closest to the hinge are pretty close to that hinge. So I might have to dremel a little bit off of that support just to uh, get enough space for the washer to go onto it. And uh, I'll double check that before I start cutting things, um, how much room I'll need. But that's kind of what it's going to mock up to be like that. Everything's pretty square. Um, we're pretty much just eyeballing it, and I can double check real quick what these numbers are at. And they're pretty much dead on on both sides, so um, I'm going to grab that sharpie and start mocking up where those holes will be, and then we'll be into finally cutting this inside piece out so that we can mount the switches and lights back onto it and put it back in the car, because I'm not wiring anything today. I'm just getting the switch panel ready for um, when it's time to wire. Okay, so I used a uh, silver sharpie just so that it's a bit easier to see um, with the plate on there. They mark up about that just so I got the corners good. So everything underneath this is going to be taken out. Um, so the switches are actually up here. And then what I'm going to do so that I don't have to fight with the actual plastic to thread the switch on to the plate is I'm going to kind of roughly line it up and I might dremel this part out just so I can set the switch in there and then see how much on each side or how much further up I need to go. I might just lay it up against it. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out and let you guys know how I measured that out. But then on the switch and then I'm going to go a little bit over the line on the bottom for the lights just to give them a little bit of room too. Um, but for the switch, it will definitely be above where the holes are marked. But that's just so that I can kind of see where everything is. Okay, so this is a very rough uh, sketch that I'm just going to, I'm going to cut out everything inside that box. Um, what I ended up doing was taking the cover off the switch and kind of holding it upside down. And just kind of seeing where it falled in, I kind of started to cut out that. Uh, I'm just going to cut out the rest of it. I'm going to watch down here because there's not a lot of room on the bottom of that switch plate. Um, so I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to use the cutoff wheel and the Dremel. Uh, the plastic melts real, real easily, so it's a bit tricky. And it melts real quick. And then, yeah, so I'm going to be careful, take my time, um, go real slow. 
make sure things don't start heating up too bad. And uh, we'll see what it looks so like. So I'm starting to get out. that cut out. I'm about halfway through. Um, it's pretty thick plastic, so it takes a lot to get through it. Um, I'm outside, sorry, there's a moth flying around me. It takes quite a lot to get through it, so I've been alternating which side I've been cutting on. I'm um, just being careful when I'm doing the back so that um, it doesn't melt too bad. Moth flying around. Um, so I'm getting through it. Uh, looking at mocking it up, you know, it's it's looking good. I'm gonna have plenty of room on the back for the switches. I should, I'm hoping so. Um, if not, I can take more off the top. But um, we'll see once I get finished getting this cut out. And uh, update when I finish this cutting out. All right, so I got the whole cut out. It's not the prettiest. So I'm not very used to using a rotary tool to cut things out. Um, and I already cut the towers a bit so that washers will fit more seamlessly. Um, this will go on like that. Look at that. There's still a little bit of wiggle room, which is good, which means I can line up my holes perfectly. But yeah, let's throw some bolts on and uh, lock those down and get this bad boy back up in the truck. How about that? Be right back when I get those locked right, on. Alright, so the hex bolts I got, there are 4 millimeter Allen, Allen hex. So those are fours, and then the corresponding lock washers I got, they're a 7 millimeter bolt. So I'm going to tighten these down, and then we'll see how that is. Alright, I'll be right back with these all tightened all right, down. Alright, so here it is, the finished thing. It's all bolted up. And like I said, I grabbed. 16 millimeter bolts, so they're a little bit long, but that's no big deal. Better be safe than sorry. Um, before mounting it up, what I gotta remember, what you guys are remember to do, make sure you tighten your switches down with that 15 millimeter wrench, those top bolts underneath the safeties. So um, I'm gonna tighten those up, and once I'm done with that, next time you'll see me is we're putting it back in the truck. All right, we're inside the truck. I got everything tightened down. Um, so it's not going to go that way, it'll go that way. Um, inside here, it just snaps in the same as it took, came off. So what we're going to do is line it up. Click, click. Look at that. That's installed, that's in there. Yeah, look at that bad boy. I like it. I think it works out good that way. If I'm driving along, that'll be my left uh, light pod. That'll be my grill bar. That'll be my right light pod. And the corresponding lights to go with that. Uh, next step will be wiring from here, which is nice because that still opens. There's plenty of room in there. I mean, there's a lot of room in there. So next will be wiring up this, sending the wires through the headliner down the A-frame and out to realize that it'll be at the front and en the engine bay, but that's the finished product and I think it looks good. Um, so I know I'm new at these types of videos. I worked hard on this. Uh, I tried doing my best with only being able to hold my phone. Um, I know I'm not the best at editing and stuff like that, but I do try my hardest. Uh, I know it's cheesy, but if you like this video, like it, thumbs it up. Um, it means a lot to see that people are actually watching my videos. Um, I unplugged the light, sorry. It means a lot to see that I'm, my videos are being watched and uh, look out for the following parts. Uh, I can't promise when they'll be, but um, they'll be in the future because funds are tight right now, so only when I can get certain parts can I do certain things. Um, in the engine, I'm going to be building a bus bar for all the wiring harnesses so that they're not all running directly off the battery. Um, they'll be battery run, but it won't be directly to the battery terminal like they are now. Um, 
I'll try and maybe do a video if I have time for how I built that or just do a quick peek through show this is what I did um, so let me know what you guys think thought feedback appreciated um, even if it's negative just be polite about it and then uh, I'll see you guys in the future thanks guys